it's also like why, you know, power players, a lot of power players do deals on handshakes. Like I've heard Brian Glazer and um, Ron, whatever his name is, like those high level producers in Hollywood, they do handshake deals because the town's so small that if one guy breaks the handshake, like he doesn't follow through, his reputation's finished. Like all the all those deals depend on each other, so they're able to do deals on a handshake because they know that the guy's reputation is proven and that he has to follow through. His reputation's dead, and he can't get any more deals in that town because big, you know, that that town at the highest level is very small, and everyone knows each other, and everyone knows who's reputable or not. And neither of them would want to get into legal uh, litigation, anyways. So a lot of those deals are done on handshakes, which was interesting to know. So. Contracts don't protect you in business, especially if you're over here like I am in Southeast Asia or whatever. It's like, dude, forget about that. You know, forget about getting something enforced over here. Um, so, so what do you do to protect yourself? Number one, go into business for yourself. Okay, I think sole proprietorship for the first business is your best move on your service business, which which is what I recommend. Number two, if you're going to partner with somebody, if you're going to partner with somebody, partner with a close, capable trusted friend okay so he's smart he's capable he's hungry he's well-mannered you love him he loves you um, and you've known him for at least a year ideally more or at least like six months or if you're in if you don't know them as, as long as that like I'm partnering with a couple readers here um, I have my sides protected right so we're gonna roll out like RLD marketing but the payments gonna be processed on my site Right? And then I distribute the payments. So I'm not, you know, liable to get money siphoned away from me. Um, so so protect yourself in, in those cases. But ideally you want guys who are down with the team because they say not to partner with friends. Okay, like maybe ideally you don't partner with anyone. But as you start to scale up, like I need to be in two or three other businesses for me to, you know, get to my seven figures, my eight figures. So I need partners, okay? But on my first business, RLD, that's still mine and always will be mine. And your first business should be that way. Like, get to six figures on your own first. And then maybe consider partnerships because you only have so much time. But then do it with a trustworthy, capable, close friend because otherwise you're partnering with strangers or enemies. And very often a stranger can turn into an enemy because you haven't screened him properly. Um, You know, if you're not doing, they say don't do business with friends, but then who the fuck do you do business with? strangers or enemies or you watch a stranger become an enemy and I've seen that happen in two of my businesses all right number three protecting yourself get paid up front you don't want a business where you're running around trying to chase down all your clients for invoices at the end of the month and it's not like a consistent thousand dollars or two thousand a month it's like okay you you owe me seven hundred and thirty nine dollars can you pay it Dude, most people don't pay their bills on time. I've worked at companies where, you know, we dealt with large insurance companies and they didn't pay their bills on time because we're not dealing with the CEO, we're dealing with the Becky, the assistant marketing manager, and she's like, oh my God, like super busy. Like I just didn't have time to sign off on that today. And so we're messing around with invoices and then our back office has to get the invoice set up. It was a mess, dude. Okay, for my peak performance coaching, it's $250 up front for a two hour call, or it's $1,000 a month up front and that's a recurring fee every month that goes by your credit card or PayPal. And, and, and all those things are notified in the terms of service and on my sales page. So, you know, my clients know exactly what to expect. And it's just automated. Okay. And if he wants to cancel, he cancels at any time. There's not a refund. But you cancel. You want to cancel, you cancel. And it doesn't recur anymore. And every month you get an automated invoice. And if you cancel, you get an invoice. And you get my agreement and my message that I canceled for you. Okay, that protects you a lot um, because look, you know, first of all, most people pay their bills late. Second of all, like, you know, out of your 10 clients, one of them, you know, who knows, maybe 10% of your clients won't pay you, right? And they owe you 15,000, 20,000, 30,000. What are you going to do? It's going to be real hard to chase them down. And uh, going to court's just going to cost you money and time away from your business. All right, which leads me to point number four on protecting yourself. Just be ethical, right? Don't give guys a reason um, to try and cheat you. Don't give guys a reason to try and not pay you. Over deliver on service. Uh, throw in little things. Maybe do, you know, if the client's not happy, do a little bit extra for them to make them happy. Uh, don't give your clients a reason 
to leave. Don't give them a reason not to pay you. Don't give them a reason to try and mess with you. Um, of course, you know, there's bad people out there. But also be ethical with your business partner. Don't, if you choose to one, don't give him a reason to, 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 to um, try and, and, and do harm to you. Okay, don't give people a reason to resent you. Give people as many reasons to like you as possible and be as ethical as possible. And that ethics and, and doing favors and doing things for people and over delivering on service goes a long way in terms of protecting yourself and protecting your brand. All right, so that's my two cents. 